Hi, I'm Sean and I'm 35 this year and I'm pastor in charge at Crystal Light Methodist Chapel. Hi, I'm Zach. I'm 39 this year. I'm lead pastor at Hearts Alive Church. Hi, my name is Andre. I'm 30. I'm the lead pastor at The City. My name is Victor. I'm 40. I'm the vicar of Chapel of Christ, the Redeemer. Well, today we're here to answer some questions while playing Jenga. Yeah! Let's do it! Yeah. Okay, Sean, go! Alright, here we go. What is the superpower you wish you had and why? I, for me, I think it would be able to teleport and then that will enable me to just be moving around, do lots of stuff and can even travel right now during COVID. Mm -hmm. right. Good point. Any book or movie recommendation and why? Uh, book, a good book I read recently, oh this is easy. A good, I mean this one. <laughs> <laughs> a good book I read recently, that's good. Uh, Faith for Exiles. So anyone working with young people, any young people maybe interested to check that out. And the movie will be uh -oh. Mulan. Mulan. <laughs> well, tell us a recent moment when you were happy. Uh, not watching Mulan, that's when I was pretty happy. Uh, my wife is five months pregnant and so we're expecting a baby girl in January. Wow. So really, really, really excited. Yeah, super duper happy. How do you distress on your rest day? I call it distressing, but I am more stressed with the children. <laughs> yeah. so I gotta, I gotta prepare myself. <laughs> A few moments later. Ah. There we go. Okay. Mm, good job. Okay. Okay. Describe your journey into full time ministry. Wow. Okay. Uh, Oh goodness, okay, um, for me I think it was, oh it's very hard to multitask huh? Uh, okay, so, I was, um, it was a normal Sunday service and then um, my pastor was preaching and as he was preaching, he was talking about full-time ministry and at some point I realised that I was no longer looking at him preach, but it was sort of like an image of a pastor preaching and I felt the Lord speaking to me. And what was interesting was that um, when he said that, I was actually very fearful. And so with every fear that came about, um, somehow God wants it through him. And so after that, Whoa. I was just convinced. Wow. So, right. yeah. Amazing. Right. Well, you know, I, I didn't grow up in a Christian home and so um, first generation believer. And I had a few friends who were really well-meaning. They were trying to reach out to me and invite me to church. And I remember a friend telling me one day, I was like, Andre, do you know where you're going to go if you die today? And then he said, uh, Andre, um, if you were to cross the road later and get hit by a car and you die, do you know where you're going to go? And I couldn't answer him the question, right? And so I remember a couple of days later, I was crossing the road, uh, jaywalking, don't advise jaywalking, uh, jaywalking, falling road, uh, and then I got hit by a car that was going about 70 kilometers an hour two-door Mercedes and so I got hit. It's a Mercedes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you want to get hit, get hit by a Mercedes. Mm. Uh, and so I went to the hospital. Uh, long story short, you know, I left without a single broken bone, wow. not a single bruise. Um, felt really protected and, and loved and preserved. And I was right, right around that time, you know, I decided and made an internal vow to follow Jesus, but also to serve Him in church, to work in the church. That's all I knew then, work in the church. Fast forward, entered ministry at 25 and it's been five years since. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My turn. What are some misconceptions people have of you as a young pastor? Some misconceptions that people might have of me as a young pastor. Do we all wear skinny jeans? <laughs> <laughs> Denim jackets. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's part of you pastor package. Right. <laughs> I, I, I guess like um, People generally might have this image of a pastor who is uh, uh, elderly and and uh, beard and you know very senior looking. And if you are if you look young, uh, they will question, like, "Are you legit?" <laughs> right? So that might be some of those misconceptions. I think people also think that as a young pastor, we will only focus on the particular age group uh, or the younger ones. That the older ones will may feel out of. Uh, out of place, yeah. But that's a misconception. Yeah, yeah that's a misconception. Yeah. Alright. Describe a time when you felt like giving up. What helped? Uh, feel like giving up now? Whoa, look at this! 
This is what we call grace, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Felt like giving up. Um, you know, sometimes when you know you're you're facing like a lot of pressure mounting on site, like particularly you know a climate like this where uh, there's like a lot of challenges, uh, you feel like giving up, you know, and uh, it's such a tough time for pastors, uh, not just in Singapore, but all around the world, pastors are facing a real challenging time. What helped is, um, you know, practicing the Sabbath, uh, having a day of dedicated rest. I think that's been super important, where you just rest, recharge, refuel, cook a nice meal, uh, stuff like that has been really, really uh, nourishing for the soul. Yeah. Okay, my turn. What is your biggest reward serving as a senior pastor. So, aha. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so the mm. biggest reward serving as a senior pastor. I think we, from the, the Anglican Church uh, tradition, it is not so much being uh, promoted per se, but we are playing different roles in the diocese, different roles in the ministry. So the biggest re reward is to know that I'm in the place that the Lord has uh, called me to uh, for this season uh, as this. Yeah. And playing my role, my little role, uh, serving uh, the diocese and the church this way. Quite okay. okay. Hey, what can church members do to encourage their pastors, Sean? I think we can cheer them on. Yeah. Like how you should be cheering me on now. Yeah. <laughs> Some sarcasm in there. Uh, I think really just yeah, you encourage. And I think just really knowing what your pastor likes and what encourages your pastor to just do it. I think really just to love us and maybe love our families too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, that would be... We love you, Sean. Why do I feel like you're wishing me that this will collapse? <laughs> ah! Well, now we have Pastor Sean who knocked down the entire Jenga block uh, to perform a forfeit for all of us for your entertainment. Enjoy. You're a good dancer. <laughs> for those of you watching, um, we just have some parting words for you. And I'm just going to begin by saying, um, young people, where you are today is not the end of your story. God has an amazing story ahead for you. Where you are today, it's not the concluding point of your life. So trust in the Lord and He has this amazing adventure awaiting for you. You know what? The world tells you to have a lot of self-confidence. But today I want to tell you that self-confidence is not good enough for you. Have God confidence, abandon your life fully to Him. He believes in you, you can fully believe in Him. That's awesome. I'd like to just remind us that we are in the world, but we are not of it. The world may have a definition of what success looks like, but success to you and me as followers of Jesus, it's to hear His voice and to obey Him in every way. And so I want to encourage you to live a life like that. It will be full of adventure, faith and stories. I encourage Amen. you to do so. Amen. 1 Timothy 4.12 says, Do not let anyone despise your youth. We focus on that, but I invite us to focus on the second part of the verse that says, But set an example for them. So young people, you can set an example, a model for the others to follow after, recognising that our Lord is the one who leads and guides us. So thank you for watching. And I pray that we pray that you understand us a little bit more. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>